You will hear a telephone conversation about a car insurance claim. You have 30 seconds to look at questions 1 to 5. Good afternoon. Watto Insurance. This is Janet speaking. How may I help you? Yes, hello. Um, I would like to make a claim on my car insurance, please. Certainly, sir. First of all, I'd like to inform you that all of our calls are recorded for monitoring and training purposes. Is that OK? That's OK. Could you please tell me your full name? Sure. It's Mr Bennett Fisher. OK. Sorry, how do you spell your surname? It's spelled F I S. C-H-E-R. Great. Thank you. I see that you have taken out a third-party fire and theft premium with us on a 2013 light blue Volkswagen Passat. Is that OK? Uh, yes. Well, almost. Uh, the colour is not light blue. It's light green. OK. Thank you for updating your information with us. What is the nature of your claim with us today? Last weekend, I had driven up to York on business and left my car in a monitored car park. However, it was only monitored until 8pm and I did not return to collect it until 9.30pm, after which no car park staff were present. When I arrived at the car park, my car wasn't there. It must have been stolen. I see. Were there any valuable items left in your car which could have been seen from outside? Well... I had recently bought quite an expensive radio for my car, but the front panel is detachable and I always stow it in my glove compartment. So, no, there wouldn't have been anything valuable on display. OK, Mr Fisher. Thank you for that information. I'm going to send you some forms through the mail for you to fill in. Before I can do that, I need to ask you a couple more questions. Is that OK? Of course. You now have 30 seconds to look at questions 6 to 10. Thanks, Mr Fisher. First of all, could you let me know your policy number, please? Of course. I have it right here. It's G34C245. G34C245. Thanks. And the type of claim? Shall we say stolen car? Yes, the car was definitely stolen. I reported it to the police immediately. I actually have the report number here, if that's of any use. No, not right now. But keep hold of that, as we will need to see a copy of the police report eventually. Which police station did you report the offence at? York Police Station. Was it your first time in York? No, but it was the first time I'd driven there. I usually take the train. Were you aware that the car park was only manned until 8pm? No, I, I was not aware of that. Were there any signs put up on the premises that informed car owners of the risks of leaving their cars after normal operating hours? Yes, but they said the car park was going to be guarded until 10pm, at which point the entrance is barred so no cars can come in or out. Was any reason given for that sudden change? The police informed me that the staff on duty that night had left on an urgent call. I believe it was something about a family member being admitted to hospital. Were there any personal items left in your car? Yes. First of all, there was the car radio I mentioned before. Ah, oh, yes, of course. Anything else? Just some CDs and an old jacket. Right. Thank you, Mr Fisher. I have everything I need for now and will send these forms out to you shortly. 
When you get them, please fill them out with as much information as you can, and where possible, include copies of any relevant documents to support your claim, such as police reports and registration details. Once you have returned that to us, we can then start to assess whether you will be eligible to receive compensation. Do you have any further questions for me today? No, that's all.、Uh, thanks for your help. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part two. Part two. You will hear a recorded message giving information about an area where tourists can visit to taste local food. First, you will have some time to look at questions eleven to thirteen. Now listen carefully to the first part of the message, and answer questions eleven to thirteen. Welcome to the tourist information line for the Valley Food Trail. Here you will find many local food products for you to sample and buy. It is possible for you to spend as much or as little time as you want, but I suggest that you allow a full day for touring this area. Of course, there are many half-day tours available for those of you short on time. Now, it's quite a large area and stretches from Brookville to Ford Hill. For those of you unfamiliar with the area, that means that it is 10 kilometers to 35 kilometers from the city centre, or by car 15 minutes to the closest point, continuing to 55 minutes at its furthest point from the CBD. Of course, apart from food, there are many other places of interest in this area, including cafes and restaurants, and galleries and studios. But I wouldn't recommend you go here to see parks and gardens. The other information lines will give you specific information related to these particular attractions. Before the final part of the message, you now have twenty seconds to look at questions fourteen to twenty. Now answer questions fourteen to twenty. But let's go back to food. If we begin in Brookville and head north towards Upper Valley in a clockwise direction, passing West Valley on West Road, we cross over Coast Road to come to our first place of interest, Magic Coffee. This is not to be confused with the Coffee House, situated opposite on the other side of the valley on the railway line. Magic Coffee is next to the chocolate company, which is on the corner. Just past the ice cream shop on the corner of John Street is the fresh produce shop. A little further north, we have reached Ford Hill, where we can start our drive southwards along Great Northern Highway, following the railway line. First, we come to the organic market near the corner of Memorial Avenue, and then to Olive Farm opposite Olive Road. Just before we come to the next street crossing, we see the Honey Pot, which is practically opposite the Coffee House.
There is another chocolate company which sells nougat as well, just nearby. Following the railway line along Great Northern Highway, we return back to Brookville. Now, as I have said previously, if you only have a few hours to spare, there are several places that you shouldn't miss. The two chocolate places make equally nice chocolate, but the factory has the added bonus of nougat, unlike the company. Of course, everyone loves ice cream, especially unusual flavours such as coffee and nougat. So the ice creamery is definitely worth a visit. And while the coffee house sells expertly made hot drinks, including hot chocolate, I think your time would be better spent sampling the many products on offer at the organic market. Well, I hope you enjoy your time visiting the Valley Food Trail and enjoy all the wonderful local foods on offer. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. Part three. You will hear a conversation between two students who will discuss a project they're working on together. You have 30 seconds to look at questions 21 to 27. Hey Jess, glad you could make it. We've got a lot to discuss. Hi Matt. Yes, sorry I'm a bit late. I did bring all my notes with me. Yes, me too. Where shall we start? Well, I think it would be a good idea to clarify our objectives just one more time. Yes, good idea. Okay, here we are. We need to record, photograph and identify the plant species in 10 one square meter plots. Does it say anything about where these plots should be and how they should be laid out? Ah, here it is. It says that all the plots need to be no more than 10 metres apart. And how do we choose them? Ah, this is the fun part. I remember this. Here we are. Make a one metre square frame using bamboo sticks available from the department stores. Yes, we've, we've already done that. I know, I'm just reading the whole section. OK. One person stands roughly in the middle of the chosen area and throws the frame. The other person uses a tape to mark out the square where the frame landed and returns frame to thrower. The thrower then turns a few degrees on the spot and throws again. The thrower must turn slightly after each throw and vary the force of the throw until after the tenth throw they are pointing in almost the same direction as the first. That sounds a bit complicated. That's only because it's all in writing. It's just a simple throw, turn, throw, turn, throw, turn, until we have ten squares. And I guess you want to do the throwing. Well, if you don't mind. I'm sure you'll be more accurate at marking the squares. Yes, I am sure I am, and I'm sure you've got a stronger throwing arm. You now have 30 seconds to look at questions 28 to 30.
Okay, good. We've got that sorted. Now we need to decide where to go. Yes, I've been thinking about that and I've brought the map. Ah, well done. I forgot mine. Now, I've identified three possible locations, but they've all got some disadvantages. Okay, fire away. Well, the area around this lowland marsh could be interesting. There'll be a lot of interesting water plants here. Looks good, but what's the problem? Mainly that it's already a designated nature reserve, and I think there's already been a lot of research done here. Ah, I see. Well, I'd rather do something that's new and can be useful. I agree. That's why I identified this area further west. See, here, behind the beach. Oh, yes, I see. That area there, where it's flat, but quite high. Exactly. If you look a bit further inland, you'll see that there are hills which will protect that area from strong north winds. I see. Excellent. But what's the problem? Just that it may not be very interesting. We know that the geology there is not conducive to a wide variety of plants. Mm, I agree. So what's your last idea? Well, I think this one is a bit of a winner, although I did want to show you the other two. Look up here on the north coast. Where? See, this bay? Well, I know that there's been quite a lot of studies done here, but a bit further to the east, behind this headland. No one has ever looked at that. Well, I certainly couldn't see any studies. That is interesting. And the plant life could be a bit different because of the shelter from the wind the headland provides. Exactly. Brilliant, Jessica. That's a great idea. We'll go there. Thanks. Now all we have to decide is when is a good time. Well... That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part four. Part four. You will hear part of a lecture on the current and future use of mobile phones. You now have 30 seconds to read questions 31 to 35. Okay, now today we're looking at changes in communication, and specifically changes that have just happened or are likely to happen in the next few years. Key to this is the mobile phone, which is increasingly being seen as an all-purpose system rather than just a phone. If you only use your phone for texting and making calls now, you will be amazed at how you'll be using it in the future. The technology has been developed for a range of other uses. For example, phones could be used so that if you are meeting someone and they get lost, you could send them a map of your location to help them. This will save all those complicated explanations over the phone and our poor friends or colleagues trying to drive and find out where they are at the same time. And if you get bored waiting, or if you're traveling, for example, you will soon be able to see TV news on your phone as it is actually being broadcast. This means that you won't have to miss any of your favorites if you are away for a few days. Most people have got used to texting now, and young people send pictures to each other. But what is exciting 
is the possibility of putting music with them before you send them. And it's not all frivolous. Phones are going to become even more critical in business and education. Some recent developments have a highly practical usage. So, for example, as lecturers, we will be able to send everybody a text to let them know if lectures have been cancelled. And the new phones could have a further use in education, as well as business, as they will enable us to go to any destination, such as when we are doing a field trip, for instance, and from there to send data directly to a computer so that we can access it when we get home. This means we will no longer be limited by what the phone can store. You now have 30 seconds to read questions 36 to 40.